Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Danuna Institute of Biblical Research and trust today is going to be a very blessed message for you guys and uh, I think you're going to enjoy this. We're going to be <clears throat> starting from the Dead Sea Scrolls and looking at a writing that's attributed to Levi. Levi, of course, the third son of Jacob, uh, his mother Leah and his name beautifully given, uh, Levi, my, my heart and uh, Leah was longing to be loved. And it's really sad for, for Leah. I've always felt for her because of, uh, you know, understanding, of course, Jacob loved Rachel. That's who he wanted. But uh, Leah, though, was very much hated. And yet God loved her and also gave her children so that she would, um, I guess, to help console her. And, uh, but anyway, Levi is his third son. And some amazing things were written by Levi. Uh, and I was totally unaware of this, uh, that were part of the library uh, of Qumran, the Qumranite community there, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls as they're commonly called. And we're going to be looking at some of those, 4Q213 uh, specifically. And uh, it really starts out interestingly enough in there uh, where he begins to write about Joseph, his brother, and uh, I'll just read a little bit from the book and then I'm going to share some things with you on the screen because as you can see by the title of the video, it's not very pleasant what Levi prophesies about his own sons and descendants, how that they would actually become the sons of darkness as the Qumranites called them, uh, walking in the way of darkness as Levi prophesies about them. And from doing the research I've done, it has yielded a wealth of information. But I want to just share this part here with you. He says here, In the year 118 of my life, the year in which my brother Joseph died, I summoned my sons and their sons, and I began to instruct them all that there was in my heart. And I began speaking and said, My sons, listen to the word of Levi, your father, and pay attention to the precepts of the beloved of God. I uh, excuse me, I to you, my sons, give orders, and you I show the truth, my beloved ones. The principle of all your deeds should be truth, and let justice and truth stay with you forever. You will bring the blessed harvest, however, ha <clears throat> however, excuse me, whoever sows goodness harvests good, and whoever sows evil, ooh, against him his seed turns. That's pretty powerful. Then it goes into a blank spot there. But, you know, you see the love that he had for Joseph, his brother. Uh, wasn't like that in the beginning, but he did have it later. And he warned his sons to hearken unto Joseph. Now, of course, as we know, Joseph was a beautiful type of Jesus, Yeshua, Mashiach, that is, uh, Jesus the Messiah. And so uh, we get this very eerie prophecy later though because he's going to expound and luckily we have that fragment number three and four of uh, the fragments 4Q213 that's K4 uh, of Qumran 213 and 213A but we're going to specifically look at uh, columns three and four of just 213. Uh, by the way on your screen a uh, picture here that I have uh, this is in Jerusalem and I put this uh, oddly enough, there are a few Orthodox Jews walking there that would be considered Pharisees of today. Uh, I think that'll speak uh, volumes to you as we read on into this in just a moment. And, uh, but before I do, let me just encourage you, those that are listening there, we certainly could use your support in the work we do here. So please visit our website. If you're on Danun Institute, our website is IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can support the broadcast there or at the end of the video at the bottom of the screen is our address if you would like to support via uh, mail. And uh, we thank you very much for that, your kindness. You can also go to Patreon, Israeli News Live on Patreon, if uh, you have trouble for some reason going to our website. Uh, people are able to do that as well. In the description below is always our information too on being able to support the ministry. So we thank you in advance for your kindness and your love for this ministry. Let's move away from the photo though now, and I'm gonna take you right where I'm reading here in this, uh, this uh, beautiful passages here by Levi. 
and uh, I think you'll find it interesting. Let me kind of pull the page down for you so you can see where we're at again. This is called 4Q, it's also called 4Q Levi, L-E-V-I, and with an A. Uh, it is an Aramaic version, so they have it in Hebrew here on here, but it's actually an Aramaic version of this particular uh, writing here. And I'm going to blow up a little bit bigger for you. And uh, just real quick, we'll look at the English side here. It says, you will become dark. This is what Levi says to his sons there. He says, you will become dark. Did not Enoch accuse? Another interesting comment that he makes there. And upon whom will the blame fall? And then he goes on, except, uh, except upon me and upon you, my sons, know then, blank spot, you will forsake the paths of justice and all the ways of, Okay, and he goes to another blank spot. You will neglect and you will walk in darkness. That's very powerful what he says there. He says that his own sons would walk in darkness. Darkness will come upon you and you will be handed over. And we get another blank spot. I would give anything in the world to know what all Levi had to say to his own sons there. But you can see right here... Uh, where he tells them in the Hebrew language there that they would actually walk in darkness. Um, it, it is so sad. Uh, up at the very beginning, you will become dark. Okay, Ken uh, is where that's at there. And it could be translated a different way. Uh, they put it, well, they put it, you will become dark because of the way it's, you have the uh, prefix, the Tav, on there. Uh, he goes on to say, did not Enoch, okay, did not Enoch halak uh, uh, kaval chanak, which is Enoch, did not he accuse, right? And then, uh, you know, so it's just filled with the, the, the claim of what was going to happen to his sons there. Now, I didn't highlight uh, verse 10 here, but there it is again, you know. De machalon ve tachakon be choshecha. Okay, and there it is. That's exactly, you will neglect and you will walk in darkness. So the whole prophecy that Levi makes of his own son, or sons, his descendants after him, is that they would depart from the truth, they would for forsake the paths of justice in all the ways, they would neglect and you will walk in darkness. Darkness will come upon you and you will be handed over. Now that one right there, that, ooh, that one in verse 11, and again, I didn't highlight that either, but it's right there, chashaka, uh, uh, choshaka, okay, that's darkness. Tatat, okay, alechen will come upon you come upon literally that you as the plural, masculine plural, that darkness is going to come upon you. Now, I brought this out, and of course the Qumranite community, as I wrote here in this little note here, called the priests in Jerusalem sons of darkness. No wonder why they called them sons of darkness. Not just because of their actions, but because they had usurped the true priesthood, the true view of priests that did not corrupt their seed line. They had corrupted that seed line and and, of course, it caused all kinds of havoc. Now, if you guys remember, just last week, I did a message here for, uh, using the Hebrew book of Matthew. We're in chapter 13, and I'm going to blow this bigger for you on the screen, so that way you can see this without any problem. Uh, and we start at verse 25, and it came to pass when the men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed tares over the wheat, that is, Bariaga, and went away. All right, now the man that does the sowing, that's the good wheat, all right, not the, not the evil guy here, but, whoop, messed up, sorry about that. Let's see, got one too many chapters up there. Let me get fix this problem here. But the sower of the good wheat, in verse 19, is the Son of Man. That's Jesus Christ. He's the sower of the good seed. But it came to pass, in verse 25, when we're sleeping. And, of course, if you remember, I actually shared with you guys the correct translation where was, says here, 
ve'yahi ka'asha b'nei adam, when the sons of man, okay, when they were asleep, then comes in the enemy and his seed is put upon the wheat. All right, his seed is sown upon the wheat. And to me it was very obvious that we were seeing the scripture or the, or the scriptural evidence from Matthew talking about what is written in Ezra chapter 9. All right, now just for the sake of looking at that, let me see if I can find the right place. Here we go, Ezra chapter 9. If you remember when the children of Israel were in Babylon, after they'd been there 70 years, they were looking at coming back, a major sin is uncovered. Now when these things were done, it says, the princes drew near unto me, saying, the peoples of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples of the lands doing according to their abominations, even the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, Jebusites, and the Ammonites, and Moabites, and the Egyptians, and the Amorites. All right, and if you remember, we've gone through this before, through where Joshua speaks about this, Moses speaks about it, not to do after the sins of the people of the land. Now, they're in Babylon, but these are the remnants of those Nephilim families. And... Those of you that are listening, that I, I do this every time for the sake, just to make sure it's not a new time. We have somebody new listening in, so I always make sure I do this. If you go to Numbers 13, chapter 13, you go to verse 33, and there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak. Okay, not Enoch, Anak, A-N-A-K. Now he comes not from Nephilim, but from Nephilim, because there's no... Yod, no extra yod in that word right there. There is only the single uh, he nun fa, fe lamed yod mim. But up here we have et ha neflim. There's that extra yod right in there. If you see that on your screen, that's how we know that Anak is from the fallen angels, not from the children of the fallen angels. All right. So this is how we got that in there. And uh, so in Ezra, it was these nations, the Canaanite, Hittites, and Perizzites, etc., Ammonites and Moabites, Amorites, that had all mixed their seed already. They had already learned to do these wicked, evil, demonic abominations. And while they went into captivity with the children of Israel when the, Judah was overthrown, uh, because remember, Israel had given them place to live there. They had made a covenant allowing them to live and uh, their remnants of their people. So they went with them also to Babylon. And while they were there, they ended up sleeping and making marriages with them. And, and that's what they're being accused of. And it goes on in verse 2, For they have, they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the peoples of the lands. And of course, there it is. It's lands, haratzot, right there. And that's in the plural. All right? So they have mingled, the, they have, they have that, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the peoples of the lands. All right? So the seed, right there, the seed in Hebrew, hakodesh, the holy seed, had mingled themselves with the peoples of the lands, and the, and the lands is plural, showing that they're not Babylonians. They were the Canaanites all the way down, uh, even including the Amorites. And don't forget, Amorites. Why Amorites? Remember, God said to Abraham, the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. The iniquity of the Amorite was completely full. and they Because the Amorites were actually in confederacy with Abraham when Abraham did the warring down through uh, Sodom and Gomorrah when their people were taken captive by uh, the, the Bab or what was it was it the Babylonian kingdom I forget which kingdom over overthrew them but uh, the Syrian kingdom or something like that I forget exactly right off the top of my head but the Amorites were actually in partnership with Abraham at that time or he was known as Abram in those days and God said to him in a vision that the, the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. That's where it was fulfilled right there. Their iniquities were filled up in that story there according to the book of Ezra. All right. Now, 
So we find there, we, we see this amazing prophecy by Levi in a book that was written by him, according to the, uh, what the scholars are saying, written by him, that his own sons, and I'm going to make that really big. I want you guys to really be able to see this the best way I can for you. All right. See, you will forsake the paths of justice and all the ways up. Then we have a blank spot as we go into verse 10. You will neglect and you will walk in darkness. That's, that's powerful. Let me, I, I'm looking back kind of in the camera there just to see how well you guys can see this. So let's just put it there big as we can. You will forsake the paths of justice and all, and all the ways all the ways of Moses. You will neglect and you will walk in darkness. Darkness will come upon you and you will be handed over. It doesn't say handed over to who, but they're going to be handed over. So they become the sons of darkness, the Levites. I mean, that's so sad. And of course, we read to you already what was written in the Hebrew Matthew. So let me, let me take you on. I want to just remind you of something here. Let me go back to the Hebrew Matthew just for a moment, though. All right? And I forget that doesn't slide over quite the same way. All right? It came to pass when the herb grew to make fruit, he saw the tares, and the servants of the master of the field drew near to him and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed? Then where came the tares? He said to them, My enemy did this. His servant said to him, We will uproot the tares. He said to them, No, lest you uproot the wheat. All right? Now, you know, in all this, if you remember, Jesus has already given them the parable about the sower being, of course, you don't have, you don't have verse 19, this first part of the verse. We don't have that in King James Version where he said the sower is the son of man. That's where he talks about, you know, he comes out, he puts the seed, uh, sc he's scattering the seeds. He talks about how some fall among the thorns, some fall on good, good, you know, good ground, stony ground, etc. The ones that go on the good ground, they come up, they produce fruit. Now, that good seed is the Son of Man that sows that. I want to show you, though, where God does the sowing at. When did Christ actually do the sowing of the good seed? Something that a lot of people don't even think about. This is it right here, and we are, in, um, we are in the book of Genesis, chapter 2. One I always share with you, but I keep in mind, not everybody, it might be a first time for somebody hearing this message here. So I want to just remind those for the folks that are here for the first time. Mainly, mainly, I want to say this for a specific reason. Let me clarify why. If we go back to what... Um, Levi was saying and before he says this and I guess I'm going to have to show you this part on the screen let me, let me highlight this for you I'm going to read it and I'll highlight it and then I want to show it to you alright he says right here and in the year 118 of my life my brother Joseph died and I summoned my sons and their sons, and I began to instruct them all there was in my heart. I began speaking and said to my sons, Listen to the word of Levi, your father, and pay attention to the precepts of the beloved of God. Alright? Now, we could probably debate this right here, but if you want to stop your screen, go back and look at this, please do. Just freeze it and look at that. See, I to you, my sons, give orders, and to you I show the truth, my beloved ones. The principle of all your deeds should be truth, and let justice and truth stay with you forever. You will bring in a blessed harvest. Whoever sows goodness and harvests good, and whoever sows evil against him, his seed turns. But now, reading and instruction and wisdom, teach them to your sons, and wisdom will be with you for eternal honor. He who teaches wisdom will be honored by it, but he who dis despises wisdom will be given to insult and scorn. See then, my sons, my brother Joseph, who taught reading and instruction of wisdom for honor and for greatness for kings. Do not neglect wisdom to teach. All right? So, 
Now, he may be referring to himself as the beloved of God, but then again, he may also be referring to Joseph. And this is what I find interesting, but he specifically, a man that at one time had betrayed his brother Joseph, now is speaking goodly of Joseph that he taught wisdom. He taught reading and writing and things of that nature there. Very valuable to, to keep that in mind. Now, so let's go back and look at this here in Genesis. You might think, wow, what does that got to do with what you just said, Steve? You'll see. Then the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. All right? And man became a living soul. Ipak bepa'av nishmar chayim. Okay? Ve'yahiha adom le'nefesh chaya. That is, that is God planting the seed. All right? He planted that seed within Adam. He put in the chayim, plural. All right? And remember, the scripture says, let every tree bring forth of its kind. Right? That's something we don't want to forget. Now, we know that in this case, Adam and Eve had partaken of the tree of life because we know by the fruit that's breathed into their nostrils. It is chayim. I say their nostrils because God breathed a plural form of the fruit into them. And Adam and Eve were at one time as one being. God separated Eve from Adam. And there's no place where God breathes in her nose. All right? And we're gonna, I can show you the type of that. God doesn't have to breathe into to, to Eve's nose. Why? Adam, if you'll notice, was a he becomes he becomes what? Veyahiha Adam le nefesh, and 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 he and he was the man le nefesh to his soul, chaya, was life singular. But he breathed, ve pakbepa'av, he breathes in his nostrils. Okay, nishmat chayim. He breathes it in a plural form. Now, we know that the tree of life right here, okay, you got the tree of life. That is clearly what was being breathed into the nostrils of Adam. What kind of fruit did the tree of life have? Chayim. Now, the letter He is a definite article for the tree of life or the tree of life, right? So, therefore, when God was breathing into Adam's nostrils, we know then that God was the tree of life because that was the fruit he ate or that, that he became a part of, all right? So, not the tree of knowledge of good and evil, okay? It was the tree of life. Now, <laughs> Hold that thought. My mind's racing, so it's hard for me. When, my, when the Spirit of God begins to move upon me, I just, it's very difficult for me to calm down here. Let's go to John, and in John's Gospel, chapter 20, we're using a King James Version Bible right here. We're going to take a look right here, and I'll highlight that as well. It makes it stand out a little bit better. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. All right? This is after the resurrection. Then what does he do? And when he had said this, he what? He breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit. Well, what breathed on them? It was, he was showing that he was the same God that breathed in the Garden of Eden on Adam and Eve. Now, I know some people, as you listen to this, you might say, well, Steve, no, they couldn't have taken of the tree of life because God put the cherubims there so that they guard the way of the tree of life unless the man put forth his hand and, and partake and live forever. The, put, the man putting forth his hand represents his sons that were in a fallen state. Okay? There had, with a fallen state, there had to be redemption. But Adam and Eve had already received the spirit of life already. And the mere fact, as Jesus said, a tree is known by its fruit. Adam and Eve were 
filled with the Chaim, that was from the tree of life, eighth Chaim, then we know that they had the Holy Spirit or the life of Almighty God because the word Chaim means God's life or Yah's life. All right? Now, so they already had that, and that's what's so beautiful. Now, I mentioned to you that I would show you that there is a biblical type in the scripture that matches Eve, and it's John the Baptist. Anybody knows anything about John the Baptist when he was born? The scripture says that he was filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. And Eve was basically not like in the womb of Adam, but she was inside of him. They were one being like John was one with his mother. And when John was separated from his mother, he was already filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you think about it, he was actually laying in the womb of his mother, had not moved whatsoever for six months. But at the very sound of the name of Jesus Christ, the child John jumped, leaped for joy within his own mother's womb. How did he get the Holy Spirit then? Think about that one right there. How did he get it? The very word coming out that Yeshua was to be born brought forth that life right upon that young man, and he was born filled with the Holy Spirit. So, I, I got to be careful I don't get too excited and start screaming and shouting. Now, I got, I got to bring something else to your attention, though. If you remember when we were quoting also from uh, the book of Levi, Levi says in verse 6, did not Enoch accuse... I wondered about that, and I can't say that where I'm going to take you next is exactly correct, but there's a good chance that it is. And we are in chapter 98 of, book, uh, of the first part of the book of Enoch, and it just makes me wonder if this may not be part of what he's talking about. Now, I do know, and I didn't have, I didn't have find the time to get all the studying of the book of Enoch done for this, when Enoch talks about the different birds uh, and what happens in, the, in that uh, prophecy, it clearly shows the entire life of Jacob all the way down to modern days. But I ran across this and it really made me, so I may be coming back to this message again. I just want to clarify that because I still need to find that and I couldn't remember where that was at. But in chapter 98, I read this and it really caught my attention. It says, And now I swear unto you, the wise to the foolish, for you shall have manifold experiences on the earth. For you men shall put on more adornments than a woman, and colored garments more than a virgin, and royalty, and grandeur, and in all power, and in silver, and in gold, and purple, and a splendor, and a food, they shall be poured out as water. You know when you read over in the book of Revelation about how that they were decked in silver and gold and purple and all manner of colors? Do you know, and I used to always liken this to be the Catholic Church. Now, granted, the Jesuit priests in the Catholic Church have become the popes and the, and the, and the cardinals, etc. They are, they're no different than the Levites of 2,000 years ago. And of course, Moses also described the way the priest would be dressed. And it's right to the T like the book of Revelation. Didn't have time to put that in, but I just wanted to share this with you. Because he says, For you men shall put on more adornments than a woman, and colored garments more than a virgin. So by the way, when women dress nice and they want to put on nice clothes and stuff like that, men, you don't need to scold them because here Enoch is writing about it before the flood ever came and he's writing about women dressed very nice, okay? In royalty and grandeur and in power and in silver and gold and purple and in splendor and in food they shall be poured out as water. Yeah, they'd become a bunch of gluttons too. We know this. I'm going to go into this. Therefore, they shall be wanting in doctrine and wisdom. Ooh, my goodness. They shall perish thereby together with their possessions and with all their glory and their splendor and shame and in slaughter and in great destitution, their spirit shall be cast into the furnace of fire. Go into the I, book of Enoch and starting with chapter 89, verse 12. 
Uh, and I'm not going to read everything because it would be very lengthy. We're talking about 70-something oh, verses maybe, and then you go into chapter 90 as well. But Levi said that Enoch, did he not accuse? And of course, the accusations would be that they would forsake the path of justice, the ways, and you will neglect and you will walk in darkness. All right? So, if you look at this, it's a very strange chapter, but a little bit of spiritual insight, and you can see what all this represents. Verse 89 right here. Uh, let me make this larger so you guys can see this on the screen here as well. But he says here, But that bull which was born from it begat a black wild boar and a white sheep. That was Isaac giving birth to both Esau and Jacob. And that wild boar begat many boars. He had a lot of sons. And that sheep begat 12 sheep. Those are the 12 patriarchs as we know them today. And of course, Levi being the third son of Leah. And then, and when those 12 sheep had grown, right, one of their number of the asses and those in turn handed that sheep over to the wolves. See, as they, as they had grown, they handed one of their number over to the asses, the Midianites. And those in turn handed that sheep, which was Joseph, over to the wolves, which were the Egyptians. And that sheep grew up amongst the wolves. And the Lord brought the eleven, right? The eleven of the, the as, as we got right here, the Lord brought the eleven sheep to dwell with it and to pasture with it among the wolves. And they increased and became many flocks of sheep. But the wolves began to make them afraid. They oppressed them until they made away with their young. And then they threw their young into a river which, with much water. But those sheep began to cry out because of their young and complain to the Lord. Now, if you go on and read this in the book of Enoch, you're going to see the entire history of what would happen to Israel as they were in, um, uh, as they were, during the times of which they were in Egypt, they go into the wilderness journey, everything in detail. Now, some might say, well, the book of Enoch could have been written in modern times of the, back in the times of the Qumranites, but the only problem is, how then would the Qumranite community know how to write the future that they did not know? Because even the prophecy of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, is in this book as well. Let me take you down to around verse 52. We'll pick up here again, uh, just a little segment here uh, to show you. Because remember, Levi said Enoch accused them. All right, let's start with verse 51. And I saw, I'll just highlight all, all that there so you can see it. And I saw those sheep again, how they went astray and walked in many ways and left that house of theirs. Yeah, he actually prophesies the building of the, first and second temple as well. And the Lord of the sheep called some of the sheep and sent them to the sheep, but the sheep began to kill them. The Lord did what? And the Lord of the sheep called some of the sheep and sent them to the sheep, but the sheep began to kill them. That's the prophets. But one of them was saved and was not killed and sprang away and cried out against the sheep and they wished to kill it. But the Lord of the sheep saved it from the hands of the sheep and brought it to me and made it stay. None other than Elijah the prophet. It's amazing. Amazing how this happens. Now, oddly enough, you got to keep in mind during all these events that are happening, who is it that is against the very, uh, the prophets to start with. It's the Levites, the priestly order. Remember Jezebel and her 400 prophets that she had, well fed at her table? Okay, now let's scroll down a little bit more here. We're gonna go down to, well, we're gonna get close to the end of this chapter before we get into the next chapter there. Let me just see. Um, a little bit too far. Let me back up just a little bit here. Let's start with verse 72. And after this I saw the shepherds pastured for 12 hours, and behold, three of those sheep returned and arrived and came and began to build up all that had fallen down from that house, but the wild boars hindered them so that they could not. Now he's talking about here 
when they'd come back out after they'd been led into captivity. Maybe I should back up just a little bit about that though because that's when the children of Israel go into captivity because of their sins. And the shepherds and their companions handed those sheep over to the animals so that they might devour them. Each of them at his time received an exact number for each of them, one after the other. There was written in the book of how many of them were destroyed. And the scripture even goes into that. And he even talks in here about how that they would do, they would kill some of their own volition and some of those that were appointed to be killed. Uh, he gets into that in this vision here. And the scripture clearly says that about what happened in Babylon, how they went beyond that which God permitted them to destroy. And, each, and they again began to build as before. They raised up that tower and it was called the high tower. And they began again to place the table before the tower, but all the bread on it was unclean, and was not pure. And beside all this, the eyes of these sheep were blinded so that they could not see, and their shepherds likewise. And they handed yet more of them over to destruction, and they trampled on the sheep with their feet and devoured them. Now this next verse, I really want you to see this next verse here, right here as well, 89, 75. But the Lord of the sheep remained still, and to all the sheep were scattered abroad, and had mixed with them, and they did not save them from the hands of the animals. Mm. Just think about it. Just think about those things there. Now, if we move on after the book of Enoch, one of the things I want to share with you is from the book of James, chapter 2. James says here, And you have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit there under, thy, under my footstool. Are you not then partialing yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? He's talking about the priest of uh, that day. Hearken, my beloved brethren, which is speaking of the children of Israel there, but he's, you know, you got to keep in mind, he's, he's trying to correct them because of the ways they had been under as they had been trained under the Levites. Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which hath promised to them that love him? But you have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by which you are called? If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, you will do well. Right? And then in Matthew, what did Jesus say? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Remember what we read in the book of Enoch where he kept saying that? Woe unto you, woe unto you. For a pretense you make long prayer, therefore you shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, you make him twofold more child of hell than yourselves. Woe to you blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple is nothing, but whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gold of the temple, the sanctify the gold. These are the words of Jesus. He says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe and mint and knives and cumin, and have omitted the weighter matters of the law, judgment, mercy, faith. These ought you to, 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 to done and not leave the other undone. You blind guides, which strain in a gnat and swallow a camel. Verse 27, one of you Pharisees and scri Pharisees, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are likened to whited sepulchers, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but are within full of dead men's bones and of uncleanliness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, If we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers in the, uh, with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, you be witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of them that killed the prophets. He finally concludes it, saying in verse 33, You serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Psalm 82, this is a good one too. I want to talk about what Levi saw and how that what he saw is hidden everywhere within the scriptures. Look at Psalm 82, a Psalm of Asaph. God standeth in the congregation of God in the midst of the judges, he judgeth. That's actually, some translate that, 
God standeth in the congregation of gods. I've seen that in one translation. In the midst of the judges, he judgeth. How long will you judge unjustly and respect the persons of the wicked, Silah? Judge the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and destitute. Rescue the poor and needy. Deliver them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither do they understand. They go about in darkness. There it is. What? They know not, neither do they understand. They go about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are removed. See? I said you are godlike beings and all of you sons of the Most High. Nevertheless, you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Why? Because they walk about in darkness. Right? Right there. There you go. They walk about in darkness. Oh my goodness. It's amazing. You can see this also. Uh, we already spoke about Ezra and I apologize. Continue on. In the book of Jude as well. See, Jude, Jude knew who they were. But there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Pharisees did that. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness, under the judgment of the great day. If you go back and you read in that book of Enoch, you will find out that's exactly what happens in the very last part of this. Um, in, in the last part, I thought I was going to have that right. Uh, and I forget exactly where, but it's, down, it's way down in here. And that's exactly what he talks about. He goes into the destruction of those angels that did not keep their first estate in that same dream and vision that he has there. All right? Let me go back again to Jude. See? Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication, going after what? Strange flesh. That just doesn't mean there's any old girl out here. He's talking about Nephilim are set forth for an example of suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defiled the flesh, despised dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Dreamers. Why does he say dreamers? If you go back and look at the, the, the soothsaying and the necromancing that they do, you'd understand better what that means. I spoke about it before, so I won't take the time again. Let's also take a look. This is in John chapter 8. Then spake Jesus again to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not, what? Walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself, thy record is not true. Sons of darkness. Levi said what? He prophesied and said, you will forsake the paths of justice and all the ways of. You will neglect and you will walk in darkness. The Pharisees of 2,000 years ago, and as Jesus said when, when their fathers were saying, well, if we had been in the days of the prophets, we wouldn't have been in their deaths. He said, fill you up the measure of your fathers. Your father is the devil. Do the works of your fathers. And now you've got the Orthodox community today that say they're the descendants of the Pharisees. Now, that doesn't mean that every Pharisee is, or, or modern-day Orthodox Jew, is of that same clan. But the point being, Levi prophesied they'd walk in darkness. 2,000 years ago, they were clearly walking in darkness. Jesus said, if you don't follow me, you walk in darkness. Levi prophesied they'd walk in darkness. The prophets all prophesied they'd walk in darkness. David and the Psalms said they would walk in darkness. It's everywhere. Isaiah says it. All right? Look here in Isaiah. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. <laughs> Do you realize what that, I mean, conceive. That's not a joke. That's not a joke. They conceive. In other words, they get, that word is also used there as pregnant. 
and they bring forth or they birth here it is birthing a child veho layad layad evan you bring you you birth evil all right iniquity evil however you want to transfer translate uh, avan is exactly what it means and then what does it say they hatch basilic eggs and weave spiders webs he that eateth of their eggs dieth and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper then just tells you you conceived no, none soweth in righteousness none pleadeth in truth they trust in vanity and speak lies they conceive in other words they get pregnant with their mischief and they birth evil Sounds like to me what was going on in Babylon. What do you think? Their webs shall not, verse 6, their webs shall not become garments, neither shall men cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity. And the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil. They make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, desolation, and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they know not. There is no right in their goings. They have made them crooked paths, whosoever goeth therein doeth not know peace. Therefore is justice far from us, neither doeth righteousness overtake us. We look for light, but behold darkness, for brightness, but we walk in gloom. <laughs> we grope for the wall like the blind, yea, as they that have no eyes do we grope. We stumble at noonday as in the twilight. We are in dark places like the dead. I mean, we get, are we getting this yet? It just blows me away. So anyway, that kind of concludes the message here. I, I just kind of lose it here at the end. That's why I thought this was an, an appropriate picture. I didn't want anything close up, though, because you don't want you to be able to identify who's there. But all these are Orthodox uh, Jewish people of today. So the point is... When you've got these ministers today telling you you need to go up underneath the teachings of the rabbis because Jesus was a Jew and you got to know the customs of the Jews. No, you don't. In fact, that's the worst thing you can do. Learning the custom of these Talmudic rabbis? Are you serious? When the prophets said they walked in darkness, when Levi prophesied they would walk in darkness, when Enoch prophesied they would walk in darkness, Isaiah, oh my gosh, Jesus himself said they walk in darkness. Is that what you want to go under? You want to promote and promulgate that kind of false lie and darkness and evil and everything you could possibly imagine to go with it? Seriously. Seriously. Uh, and, and I get people still write me. Steve, there's no way I can say anything bad about Israel. Listen, did Jesus have a problem with saying something? Did the prophets have a problem with saying something? Are you afraid to call out sin? Not everybody's meant to call to do it. I agree with that. That's why I say if you want to support the truth, support the truth. Stand with us. If you want to go support the lie, Give your money to Israel. I guarantee you to go to every dark corner of the world you possibly can. It'll actually bring about the beheading of Christians in the end. You just wait. It's coming. Go read the rest of Enoch there, the parts I didn't read to you. Go read it. You'll see what's going to happen. Yeah, they're going to keep right on killing you. They're not going to stop until they're done. But then it does say, Enoch does prophesy how that the Lord comes down with his rod and judgment and smites the earth and it splits wide open. That judgment's coming. You know, there's a beautiful prophecy. Let me see if I remember where I... Okay, I got it right here. I'll share that before we close here. Let me go back to the book of Enoch here. Where we got right here. It's in... Um, right in this area here, I believe. And in those days, the angels will come down into the hidden places. Let me, let me highlight. I want you to really be able to see this. And in those days, the angels will come down into the hidden places and gather together in one place all those who have helped sin. Okay? And the Most High will rise on that day to execute the great judgment on all the sinners. Now, notice. He's going to gather together in one place all those who have helped sin. 
You remember the, the scripture where he says, Jesus says this, I believe it's Jesus says this, that he will bind up the tares in the parable that he gives. He said, I'll bind the tares. He'll send out the, those, the, those reapers. They're going to bind the tares first into bundles. And the wheat would go to the garner, right? Well, this is also prophesied right here. And he will, now watch this though. He will set guards from the holy angels over the righteous. And holy, and they will guard them like the apple of an eye until an end is made of all evil and all sin. Even if the righteous sleep a long sleep, they have nothing to fear. And the wise men will see the truth and the sons of the earth will understand all the words of this book and they will know that their riches will not be able to save them or overthrow their sin. Woe to you sinners when you afflict the righteous on the day of severe trouble and burn them with fire. You will be repaid according to your deeds. Right there. Woe to you perverse of heart who watch and devise evil and fear will come upon you and there is no one who will help you. Woe to you sinners for account of the words of your mouth and for an account of the deeds of your hands that you have impiously done. You will burn in blazing flames of fire. You ministers, you're afraid to say the truth. You'd rather go support the blind sheep. Instead of trying to help those sheep that are blind, and granted, understand this, God's always sending the prophets. He sends the shepherds to try to warn the sheep. That's including the Orthodox Jews of today to wake up, get their eyes open. But you, on the other hand, would sit there and instead you go, you go and you stand with them. Not, not, there's nothing wrong with trying to win them to Christ, but to go and stand with the evil. Woe to you sinners for an account of the words of your mouth and for an account of the deeds of your hands that you have impiously done. You will burn in the blazing flames of fire. And now know that the angels will inquire in heaven into your deeds and from the sun and the moon and the stars into your sins for on earth you execute judgment on the righteous. Hmm. Check it out for yourselves. If you want to stand with truth, we appreciate you standing with us. Please do. We need your support. We need your help in telling the truth to the rest of the world. And share the video everywhere you possibly can. Share it on your Facebook page. Share it on your Twitter account, Instagram, whatever you may have. Please share it everywhere you possibly can. If you copy the video for some reason and put it on your channel, please let them know where to go and find out about these videos. I, I see that all the time. People share them on their channel. But there's nothing in the description that tells them IsraeliNewsLive.org. In fact, if you're watching this video, see where you're watching it at. If you're not on Israeli News Live on YouTube or Danun Institute YouTube, you're not on our channel. You haven't you're probably not getting the videos that we produce because there are people that do produce, uh, copy it and post it, but you have no idea where the rest of the things are that God has given us to say to you. Thank you for watching and blessings to you. Sorry about the message being chopped and spliced together. Had several things that I got too lengthy on, so there's a lot of cuts and splices in it.